Hello and welcome to my pathology video and in this video I'll be giving you an introduction to the general pathology. So learning objectives of this presentation is to define pathology, histopathology and cytopathology, to discuss the core aspects of disease and pathology, to know the various causes of disease, to know the course, outcome, consequences of disease. So we're just going to start off with some definitions, okay? So a disease is a condition in which the presence of an abnormality of the body causes a loss of normal health. And usually this is standardised within two standard deviations from the norm. So whether or not you are within the norm can tell you whether or not you're in a disease state or not. Then you've got pathology. So pathology is the study of disease. So anything ending in ology, for example, is study and path meaning disease. Then you've got histopathology. So this is a study or examination of tissues for the manifestation of disease. So histo meaning tissue, path disease, ology, study. Then you've got cytopathology. So this is the study of diseases at the cellular level. So cyto meaning cell, path meaning disease, ology, study. So what are some of the characteristics of a disease? So some of the characteristics begin with the very beginning, so the etiology, so what causes the disease. The pathogenesis, so the mechanism of the disease, so how the biochemistry impacts on you. The morphology, so the structural changes that occur as a result of this, or the structural changes of the disease itself. Clinical manifestation, so these are the functional consequences, so what symptom signs arise. Sequelae, so these are the complications or secondary effects of the disease, so what happens after the initial disease itself, or how it can spread. Then you've got prognosis, which is the outcome, so once you've had this disease, what is happening now that you're freed of the, the disease? Then you've got epidemiology, so this is incidence, prevalence, and population distribution, so again it's an ology, so it's a study, and it's a study of diseases in the population, so not just the disease itself, but like the social factors and everything like that. So we're going to begin with etiology. So diseases can have a massive variety of causes, but we can we can separate these into three categories. So you've got genetic, environment, and multifactorial. So genetic abnormalities are from the genome. So in a few examples, these are Down syndrome, where you've got an extra chromosome, cystic fibrosis, when you've got a mutation. Then you've got environmental factors, so these are like physical, chemical, nutritional, microbial, immunological or psychogenic factors. So an example of a physical cause could be like a broken bone, for example. Chemical, so you could have toxins or poisoning. Nutritional, you could have like a vitamin C deficiency for scurvy. Microbial, which is obviously infection. You can have allergies if you're immuno immunological. And also stress as well. And then you've got multifactorial, so these require a combination of both genetic and environmental factors. So again, a good example of this is cancer. So it's not only just caused by just a genetic change. Okay, There's a sequence of events that lead up to these genetic changes. Again, same thing for diabetes. It's a combination of both genetic and environmental factors. So under the category of etiology, you've got causes and agents. So causes is what factors can influence the manifestation of a disease. And the agent is what exactly causes the disease. So, for example, we're going to talk about tuberculosis. So, some of the causes of someone getting tuberculosis include poverty, malnutrition, overcrowding, or overpopulation. And again, and the agent that causes this is Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So, if we just look at this global distribution graph here, areas which are blue are areas where there is low prevalence of TB, so not as many incidences. Then, as you go more yellow, that's where cases are higher. And as you can see, in developed countries, such as Europe, Northern America, and Australia, there's really little prevalence of TB. And again, in the third world countries, so you've got Southern and Central Africa and across Asia, you have really, really high prevalences. And again, this can be due to poverty, and because it's third world, there's not much technological development. Malnutrition, because they haven't quite got the correct agriculture and overcrowding. So this is really prevalent in places like India and China, where they've got huge populations of over 1 billion people per country. So that's a lot. And when you're in close proximity, the cough droplets from someone infected with TB are more likely to pass on to another person. Okay, now we're going to talk about the pathogenesis. So a few examples for the pathogenesis include inflammation, degeneration, neoplasm, and immune response. So these are some of the ways that a disease can manifest itself. 
Then you've got development. So, so the disease can manifest itself over a period of time. So it can either be latent or it could have a real short incubation period. So carcinogenesis is one of the examples that take years and years and years of acquired mutations in order to develop. Whereas on the other hand, if you've got an infection, it could literally take a few minutes, days or weeks for that microbe to incubate itself before the disease or pathogenesis can occur. So then we've got morphological changes. So space occupying lesions include those which, for example, like cancer, can take up a, like an unusual space within the body, forming like a mass, which can cause compression on other places. The deposition, so this is when unwanted chemicals, crystals, or any material is where it shouldn't be. So for example, in atherosclerosis, when you've got these fatty deposits around the arterial lumen, which can block, impede and block bl blood flow. Abnormally cited tissue, so these can include like the metastases of cancer, so you could have widespread growths. Loss of healthy tissue, so this can literally be like greys where you've just lost skin, damage to the lumen of an artery, for example. Obstruction, so the blockage of a pathway, so an example of this is asthma, so when the airways is beginning to be obstructed and the breathing becomes more difficult. Then you've got distension and rupture, so this is where like vessels and the blockage of flow or like liquids, for example, can burst, cause an internal hemorrhaging, for example. Then we've got clinical manifestations. So these are the signs and symptoms which a disease can arise. So some of the common signs and symptoms you get are pain, fever, nausea, malaise, which is just the general feeling of illness. So changements to your bowel movements can be an indication of like um, digestive disorders, for example swelling so again like if you notice a tumor like when you feel like for your breasts or testes for primary stages of cancer if you feel like abnormal swellings or lumps that can be an indication breathing alterations so if you're struggling to breathe sometimes for example it could be an indication of emphysema lung cancer etc even skin rashes which can be localized infections and there are just loads and loads of different examples then complications and sequelae so this could be like the infection spreading from different organs to other areas of the body. So for example, in necrotizing fasciitis, it can literally start off with a small cut on the tip of your finger, for example. But some of the complications associated with this, it's not just localized to the fingertip. It will gradually spread. It will consume your whole finger, consume your whole hand. You'll have an infection spreading through your whole blood when you get systemic infection, so your blood. Other examples can include the metastasis of tumors. So... For example, the lungs and bones are, pro are really like, integral sites for secondary metastases. So these can release sort of growth factors which will allow the chemotaxis of the metastases to localize in those areas, so promoting the spread of cancer. And also whether any long-lasting damage can be as a result. For example, if you've got any nervous damage, this can lead to paralysis or even behavioral changes. So you could start off you know, having a good positive view on life, but all of a sudden, as a result of this, you could become more agitated, angry, depressed, etc. And then prognosis, so the outcome or the fate of the patient. So often you'll hear this in like medical dramas or medical TV shows, like, oh, the patient's got a good prognosis or a poor prognosis. So good prognosis is when there's little or no lasting effects as a result of the disease. So, good, so a good example of this could be, for example, cancer. So usually cancer patients could be severely like worn out to the point where they're having multiple organ failure because of the tumors metastasized. But upon chemotherapy, correct operational procedures, the patient could live a relatively normal life. So they'll have a good prognosis. And a bad prognosis is when there's detrimental effects as a consequence. So, for example, people suffering with meningitis could suffer neuronal damage, paralysis, and this is all as an after effect of the disease itself. So, earlier diagnosis can improve patient prognosis. So, you can you hear this in like cancer stories all the time. The earlier you diagnose it, the quicker you can treat it, and the quicker your outcome will be. So, fast. So, what we need is screening programs, fast diagnosis, and also just being healthier in general can improve your prognosis. And epidemiology, so the scope of the disease across a population. 
So this is like analyzing the mor morbidity and mortality rates. So morbidity is the spread and, or the rate that disease is prevalent in a population. And mortality is how fatal the disease is, so how many people are being killed annually, weekly, or whatever by this disease. And e epidemiological studies provide the age can provide etiological clues. So you'll be analyzing right what's happening in this population. In this population, is there a link on what on what is actually causing this disease? Planning on preventative procedures. So this happened with the Ebola outbreak. So once Ebola manifested itself, researchers and the governments worked together to try and combat this disease and help prevent it from causing further outbreaks. Again, this can promote funding into certain disease fields, hopefully leading to vaccination programs and so on and so forth. Okay, this here is just an image showing you the flow of disease. Because okay, so up here we've got the etiological causes. So we're just going to focus on this one for now. So this is lung cancer. So one of the biggest etiological causes of lung cancer is smoking. Okay, as a result of this, so the pathogenesis, you get genetic alterations, so you get unstable genomes. So these mutations are quite a period of time, will then lead onto the tumour itself. And then as a consequence of this, you can get metastases, so secondary tumours in the bone marrow and other organs. Okay? And the same thing can be for infections. So imagine we've got Staphylococcus aureus. So the pathogenesis of this, it attacks your cell, causing inflammation. And as a result of this, you can get a skin abscess or a boil. But if, for, for instance, in an event that it spreads into the blood, this can lead on to septicemia. So septicemia would be a consequence of a Staphylococcus aureus infection. And again, on the topic of the course of the disease, so upon exposure to the pathogen over here, so from here to here, we've got the incubation period. So this is where the pathogen itself is multiplying to the point where it is then able to form a disease. And then once it's reached a certain point, you get the biological onset of a disease. So this is the stage where the disease is starting to manifest itself. And between here and the symptoms appearing, this is the preclinical phase. So this is the pathogenic part of the disease. And then once your symptoms have appeared, until the point where you are being treated, this is the clinical phase. So here you will receive your diagnosis and the beginning of therapy. However, between the outcome and diagnosis, you could have possible relapses or changes in therapy, depending on the severity of the disease, or whether the treatment itself fails. Okay, so now we're going to move on to disease nomenclature, okay? So you probably see this, like, Doctors will give you some sort of crazy name like hypersupercalifragilisticosis or something like that. And you just pretty much won't know what it means. But hopefully after the, I just tell you a bit about disease nomenclature, you'll probably have a better understanding of how these are named. Okay, so we'll start off with congenital. So this is caused during fetal development. So this can be genetic or non-genetic. Okay, so you've probably heard of like congenital heart disease, for example. And also Down syndrome is another example of a congenital disorder, okay? So it's not something that you inherit from your parents. It, this happens as a result of a, of a mutation or a karyotype error within fetal development, giving you the extra chromosome, so trisomy 21. You've got acquired, so these are gains throughout one's individual life. So again, example of these can be infections, cancers, deficiencies, and so on and so forth. You can have primary and secondary. So primary is when the cause is even not evident. And in terms of stages, this is the initial site. So primary tumour is the initial site of where the tumour is. Then you've got secondary. So secondary causes can be the complications or the manifestations of some underlying lesion. So throughout this, you'll hear me saying lesion. So lesion is just another term for abnormality. And again, in terms of like cancer, for example, secondary is when you've got metastases. So this is when it spreads to secondary sites. Then you've probably heard of acute and chronic, so acute angina, chronic angina, for example. So acute is when you've got rapid onset, onset but also often, but not always, you'll have a rapid resolution. So although it comes on quick, you'll often find that it can also disappear quick. So for example, hypersensitivity and allergies, you'll have rapid onset, but it can also quickly disappear. However, with chronic liver side, it's insidious, so this is a long period onset. And this will often last for a prolonged period of time. So, for example, chronic heart disease. So this is heart disease, which will last ages and ages, and it won't just go away overnight. 
And then also you've got benign and malignant. So benign is when it's localized or it's not growing as such. And malignant is when it's spreading, invading, and so on and so forth. Okay, now we're going to move on to disease prefixes. So these are the terms which go at the beginning of these of the name to give you a rough idea of what's going on. So for example, we've got anus, so this can mean back again up. An example of this is anaplasia. And you've got dis, so this is bad, difficult, defective, or abnormal. For example, dysplasia. So imagine it as disorder, for example. Then you've got hyper and hypo, so these are pretty obvious. So hyper is excessive, so hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and hypo meaning deficient, so hypotension is low blood pressure. Then you've got meta, which means after, beyond, or change. So you've got metaplasia, metastasis, example. Then you've got neo, so you've got neo, which means new. So obviously neonatal means newborn, and neoplasia meaning new growth. Again, all of these prefixes, suffixes, we're trying to be going for. Right? You can go onto this Wikipedia site, and it will literally give you a massive list of suffixes and prefixes. Because obviously, because I can't go for all of them on one video, so you might just want to go onto that link and have a look yourself. So here are the disease suffixes. So anything ending with itis, for example, is a sign of inflammation. So for example, arthritis. Something ending in oma is often an indication of a tumor or mass. So for example, a teratoma, which is a tumor of stem cells. So you get abnormal growth. So you can have teeth growing in your head, teeth growing in your feet, for example. Anything ending in osis is a condition or abnormal condition. So ketoacidosis is the condition of ketones causing acidic conditions. Anything ending in oid is a resemblance, so rheumatoid arthritis, so like rheum, rheumo, if that makes sense. Anything ending in penia means a lack of or deficiency, so thrombocytopenia means you've got deficient thrombocytes, so you might have blood clotting issues. Anything ending in cytosis, you're referring to an increased number of cells, so leukocytosis, meaning a high white blood cell count, so this could mean another word for leukemia, for example. Anything ending in ectasis so this is usual to do with dilation so bronchiectasis if you also have blood vessel dilation problems for example anything in ending in plasia is a disorder of growth so hyperplasia means excessive growth and anything ending in opathy means an abnormal state so neuropathy means abnormal neurons and also anything that's got eponymous eponymous name diseases are named after the founder or someone suffering the disease so for example Alzheimer's disease, Hodgkin's disease, and Down syndrome are all named after the founders, for example. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the test cell section. So here I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you are going to answer it. I'm not going to tell you how many marks each question is worth, and I'm not going to give you a marking for it. I'm going to let you decide on your this yourself. So the first question is define pathology. What could be the etiological causes of liver disease? And if someone stated that they are suffering with hyperkalemia, assuming you don't know what this disease is, and based on the nomenclature of diseases, what do you think hyperkalemia is referring to? So again, this is my introductory video to pathology. So I'm, I cover the nomenclature, some of the causes of disease, and general pathology. And gradually we'll be moving on to videos about specific diseases, okay? So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you benefited from this video. If so, just leave it a like. Just tell me that you did enjoy it. If you've got any comments, or just questions that, for example, if I wasn't clear on certain aspects, just drop them down in the comment section below and I'll answer them as soon as possible. And also, if you've got any questions that you would like other people to ask, so for example, setting your own case study based questions or your own questions for other people to answer, just post them down in the comment section and that'll be a bit of fun. It will help your revision. So, again, thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace out, guys and guys.